Good morning, good morning. This is Jacqueline Richard Simmons, JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. Good morning in the neighborhood. Sun shining bright. I don't know what the weather is today, but the sun is shining bright. I gotta go out there and see. They're doing some, um, something out there. I don't know. I hope y'all don't hear it. The background noise. They're always doing something with the grass and the trees and putting hay down and making all this noise. I don't know what they're doing. But anyway, today, guys, I want to talk about Black China. Now, but 10 years ago, um, no, 11 years ago, uh, February, let's see, was it 11 years ago, February, or was it 10 years ago, February? 10 years ago, February, I went over to L.A., I didn't get a chance to meet Black China. Um, however, y'all know that um, I was talking back and forth with Tiger, okay, which she was with him at the time. Um, they were together as a family. And when I was writing him on information, you know, um, I believe it was her that was helping me. Um, it could have been him as well because, you know, they responded to me a couple of times. You know, um, on things to do, you know, um, to help build this label. They knew that I had touched down in, in L.A. Because, uh, of course, the pictures, you know, let the people know that I was there, you know. So that got them, um, how can I say it? it? It told them that I was serious because I made that trip. Uh, to try to find out what was needed to do in order to build a real music label. Well, online, like China will contact me every now and again. Um, and I'm a contact her back, you know. And God bless her, you know, I'm, I got tears in my eyes because I'm proud of her. You know, I'm making that choice to go back natural. You know, um, she's been down a hard road. You know, some of y'all that's seen her TV show, I couldn't even watch it because she was going through so much on that TV show. Um, and y'all know what she went through with the the brother, uh, one of the Kardashians, the brother she was dating. She was going through it. You know, um, I'm glad that God has given her an awakening. You know, um, it takes time uh, learning God, but she took that step, and I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of her um, coming to the other side. You know, um, sometimes our sanity means more than anything, you know. And when you are working in the industry, Entertainment industry, it can take your sanity. I've seen it happen to a lot of people. You know, that's why you have some people that, that stay and some people that just, they can't do it, they go. You know, you can't find real love. You know, um, somebody that just love you for you. You know, everybody wants the fame. You know, it's either the fame or the money. You know, you're not spending time with your children, you know. It's a lot of things that people don't understand about the industry, the entertainment industry. The soul cries out for real love sometimes, you know. Um, real compassion, real friendships, you know. The soul, that the soul cries out for it, and um, when the Holy Spirit tells us to move, we need to move. So we know that the Holy Spirit has told her that she needed to, what she needed to do, to get where she needs to go, wherever that may be, within her soul. That's the thing people don't understand. About being in this this entertainment industry, you have to do so. Especially women, we have to do so much, 
You know, we get put down so much, you know. And it doesn't make sense because y'all don't know what we go through. How are you judging people that you know nothing about? They're just trying to live out their dreams, you know. And sometimes we make mistakes. We don't know which route to go because people will tell you a million and one things about, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that. In order for you to do this, you do that. Mm -mm. It's not true, you know. Um, just like, you know, a couple of people was telling me, you know, I was laughing at them, you know, I'm from the old school, so, you know, I wasn't listening. Um, people was telling me how I needed to go get me some more butt and, um, a flat belly. And I laughed at them. That made me put my belly out there even more. Okay, I do it on purpose just to make y'all mad. And y'all y'all looking at me like, um, oh, but well, you need to get fixed. No, y'all crazy. I'm godly. I'm not changing my body to sell no music, make y'all happy. If y'all can't accept me like I am, oh, well. I could be slim today and fat tomorrow, depending on how I feel. If God tells me get up and work out, I'm going to get up and work out. I'll be slim and trim. You better catch me while I am. Because if you don't, I'll be fat again. And that's just what it is. I don't care about what the people say. Because true fans, they're going to really listen to your music. And endure what your mind tells you. They want to, I mean, tells them. They want to know about the mind. What, what, what do you have to offer mentally? And if you can grab fans mentally, they don't care how you look. To them, you're going to still be beautiful because of your mind. And see, that's the things that wasn't taught in the industry for a very, very long time. You know, when I came back into the industry, I was I was slim. I was working out all the time. You know, I was with my younger brother, Noel. Um, matter of fact, I was with his wife um, the other night, Dr. Dewanda Conway Epps. Um, I was with her. That was his ex-wife. I'm sorry. His ex-wife. Um, she came to visit North Carolina. And she was working hard to get her doctrine. Real hard. And um, she got it. And she's building her businesses. And she, she's not playing. And, and I love it. You know, I love it so much. However, getting back to my brother, for those that don't know, my brother Noel was one of the ones that I started out making m music with. It was me, him, and um, Cochise, okay? And yeah, I know y'all heard me talk about Cochise. Um, he's also here in North Carolina. I haven't seen him in a while, but he's here in North Carolina as well. Um, but I say that to say, back then, we wasn't worrying about how fat, skinny, you know, if you had a big butt. And hey, let me tell y'all something. I'm going to tell y'all this story. Now, back when I had my daughter. I had my daughter at 16 years old. Okay? And after I had her, I got on birth control pills because I didn't want no more kids. And um, I got so big. Okay? My butt was humongous. Okay? We walked down the street. I, was, I used to always be my friend. And we walked down the street. She had a big butt. I had a big butt. And all the niggas saw was our butt. That's it. They ain't see nothing else. They ain't see the face. They ain't see what clothes we had on. All they saw was the butt. It was my goal, okay, to get rid of it. I used to cry because I was like, oh, it's just too much. When we had a lot of fellas looking at us, but they wasn't looking at us. They really didn't care. All they, they saw was the butt. So I learned that back then. So when I got rid of that butt, I was happy. We as women, you know... We go through a lot mentally, emotionally. We 
especially when we have children. People don't get it, you know. We have to be a certain way, you know, for our children. Role models for our children, you know. And it's hard for us to be role models for our children when we're trying to entertain people that don't even give a damn about you. That really don't care, don't love you. You know, they're your fans, but that's all. That's why when I tell people, you know, when they say, I want to be in the music industry, do you really want this? Because it's a hard ordeal. Now, the thing that I don't like, you know, is like how social media now um, decides they want to control people, you know. Control, not even social media. Like yesterday, well, my daughter told me it's possibly it because I'm, I'm watching now. Um, I got a text yesterday, and all of a sudden the text disappeared. But my daughter was telling me that they could have probably unsent the text. So, okay, I was able to appreciate that because I said, okay, they're not controlling it. But as I showed yesterday, Y'all saw how I put up a post, okay, that they did not want to release. Okay, now, mind you, not only do I have a, a business license, okay, I have a permit. Um, why are they stopping me? I live in North Carolina where my business license is. I have my EIN numbers. Why are you stopping me? Now, I'm in the process right now applying for the city of Charlotte permit, but I have the, the North Carolina state permit, okay? So I decided to apply for the, the city as well because you can actually get contracts with the city, and I'm right here in the city, you know, so I apply for that as well. So I'm saying to myself, why are y'all holding my post? Why are y'all doing this? Trying to stop me from getting money, trying to stop me from surviving, what is it, your goal to try to kill me? I have a kid I have to take care of. I have the right to run business. I've been running my business for 10 years. Who gives y'all the right to control my ads and my posts? But this is what they do. Okay? And it makes it more difficult for the artist to survive. And just like I had told a lot of the artists a couple of months ago, I said, listen, I don't know what y'all going to do, but if you know better, you get up off that internet and get back on the ground. Because before the internet existed, the ground was always here, okay? And people were still making money. There's some artists that you barely see on the internet. Okay, matter of fact, I saw... um, Slick Rick, he was with some of my people from New York and um, took some pictures and stuff. I met Slick Rick many, many years ago. However, he came up in the era where there was no internet, so he had to put the work in on the ground. And that's why he's still here today. Okay, he was able to do whatever he needed to do, work, whatever, uh, put his music out properly. Matter of fact, he is one of the biggest... um, Artists that Russia loves. Okay, one of the biggest. People wouldn't know because they may not be fans of him. Okay, but he is. He walking around with his um his patch, his jewelry, and he perform. And he's still here in the industry. But you don't hear him all over the radio. You don't see him on the TV. But he's still getting that money and making and having shows. Everybody can't be on the front line and everybody shouldn't be on the front line. And quiet is kept. The people that is on the front line, they're only on the front line temporarily until somebody else come through and snatches up that front line money.
And that's just what it is. And most of the time, that frontline money belongs to whatever label they're with, not the actual uh, artists. You don't see the label owner. The label, label owner is normally in the background. For me, you see the label owner. I'm the label owner. And the reason being is because I needed more artists. And I decided to say, you know, hold on. I know I can do this. I used to do it when I was young. So, let me help my label. And put some work in. So, that's what I did. When they saw me start getting paid. They want some of the guys wanted in. Well, my son was already in, but he was like, okay, I see mommy over there doing good. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me drop an album. It's hard to make a music sale. <laughs> when people come up to me and be like, oh, I, I, I want to be a music artist. Do you really? Well, you better get a job. That's the first thing I tell them. You want to be a music artist? Get a job. And they look at me like I'm crazy. Like, get a job. No, we don't get a job. That's not how they do it. Yes, that the, if you want to be in it for real, and you can play the games and wind up in jail. But if you know what I know, you'll get a job. And do your craft. Until it becomes your full-time lifestyle. Because it takes money to market. It takes money to keep up websites. It takes money to buy clothes to perform. It takes money to get to your performance. It takes money to register for you to even perform. A lot of you people don't even realize y'all are performing illegally. Because you're supposed to have a permit. That's what made me get the permit because I plan on, um, I'm still fighting to sell these copyrights so I can get the money uh, to have a big event. But you need a permit for all of that. Okay, but people don't know that. So they running around, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. So the first thing everybody said, oh, but let me go over to L.A. You know, that's the first thing I thought to them go over to L.A. Let me see how much they helped me. But when I seen that LL, all L.A. did was um, n- notice who I was. It did help. It was like, notice who I was. I came over there to visit. I took that plane ride. You know, um, I had some people over there. So he was able to show me around and show me some things, you know. Um, but the reality of it was I didn't even need to go. But I wanted to go. I wanted to see L.A. Um, But I said that to say. I didn't really have to go. I could have did it all right here from the East Coast. I just needed the knowledge. And it took a while to get the knowledge. But I got it. Then I told myself I have to have patience. So this is when I had to go to God on it because I, I told myself, listen, ooh, if this is this is very stressful, God. I, you you got to help me through this. If this is a journey that you want me to take, you brought it to me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to to work it. But what it did was it helped my community because it helped me teach the kids of the community that did want to be rappers: Is this something you really want to do? You don't want to get caught up in this mess and you don't even know what is going on in this industry. You know, people see the glam. They see the beauty in it. But sometimes beauty can be a curse. You know, I just got out of the relationship that I realized... Um, a person only really wanted to be with me because of the fame. 
he never really liked me for real, for who I am and, and um, what I stand for. He just wanted the fame. Who wants to live like that? Knowing somebody that do not really care about you, they just want what you have. So you never really find anyone that's genuine. Unless they in the, in the industry as well and know what channels and the heartbreaks and the the pain that we go through. It's really hard. You got everybody competing with everybody, you know. Like the team that I work with, we're, we, you know, we, we're pretty much strong. We help each other. Keep each other alive any way possible. Like, you know, like uh, Nicki Minaj, she helps me a lot, you know, and I'm, I throw it back. My state, they watch me do certain videos online, you know. They saw I did the Nicki, um, the Magic Mirror recently. And they start playing a couple of Nicki songs. We barely hear Nicki on the radio here. Very rare. She was big in Maryland, though. There's a couple of artists that was big in Maryland. When I was in Maryland, you got a YMCA and B period was playing on the radio. Like, all the time, it was either Nicki, Wayne, or Drake you was hearing on the radio. Uh, Beyonce... Um, Jay, um, trying to think, uh, Tony Braxton, of course, I know she, she come from there, so you know they're going to play her music, you know, um, but not all states are the same, you know, you're not going to get that same exposure, you know, in all states, and we know that, that's why it's good to know our, uh, Geographic, where they're playing our music or where they're listening to our music. Like when I look at my um, stats, I know what state and how many people. Because you got people that will listen to your music over and over and over to help your revenue. You know, not only help your revenue, but they just like it. You know, but you need to know if that was one person that gave you a hundred listens or streams or was it a hundred people? It makes a difference. You still know you got a fan. But that's how you're able to tell whether or not you should waste the money on booking a show in that state. Um... It's a hard road. And once again, especially for women. And women with children. You know, it's a very, very hard road. This is a hard, hard business. You know? If the DJs don't like your music or they don't like you, they ain't gonna play it. You know? Some people put a lot of money into making a song. And the DJs won't even play it. They'll make a beautiful video. And nobody will even listen. And if y'all notice, that's why me personally, I don't make a video until I know the people like the song. And I haven't even made any videos lately. Well, for one, I need help. And everybody on my end is scary. Everybody's so scared or want a, a whole bunch of money. And I got bills to pay. 
And I got a kid that likes $180 sneakers. Got to buy food. Gas. Pay car note. It's a lot. And then somebody come to me and be like, oh, I want three to five hundred dollars for a video. Really? Oh, okay. No, a video ain't getting made because um baby needs some shoes, we need some food, bills need to be paid. My fans are gonna still love me. And when they wanna see me, they go on social media. But I've learned to do a lot of things myself as well, but that way to cut the cost. Business wise, you know, but I would never bank on doing something, especially in the music industry, um, for it's a pushback revenue, and I'm expecting in return, even with business, I don't do that. You know, and I've learned my lesson, you know, the mess with Amazon. I learned my lesson, you know, um, I, I went and spent all this money um, to get product because I was going to be selling on Amazon and I had to have enough of product because he has lots and lots of customers and for them to tell me, oh, we don't need you no longer or oh, we don't, we, we a fool. Wait a minute. How are you fool when you're the one who requested me to get my trademark? So I don't play. I don't play with these businesses no more because they made me lose my money. Okay, now, I didn't actually lose my money because I still made some of my money back because I went out there and hustled it. But I don't play with these businesses no more. You come to me correct or don't come at all. And see, I didn't ask to be on Amazon. Amazon came to me. They wanted to be a third-party seller for me. You know, and then you made me waste money. Technically, I can sue him. But it's a waste of time because I would have to go all the way up to um, Washington State. You know, put the paperwork in to sue him for the monies that I lost. So I didn't even bother with it. Why? Because the government gave it back to me. They didn't give it all back to me, but they gave some of it back to me. I just don't want to be bothered with it no more with them. Then I um, wanted to do SD. You know, I said, okay, let me... Because I, I was doing SD at first, actually, and Amazon came to me. Uh... They want to block my site where people couldn't even order. I got people calling me on my number saying, what is going on with your site? They're saying that you it's too full. Too many orders are coming in. Is that the truth, Jackie? No, that is not the truth. So they're like, oh, okay, so they're still messing with you. They're still trying to control you. So they forget people will pick up the phone. Especially family members. Because they want to know. Especially when they watched you invest your money. Because they don't know if they're going to have to be one of the family members to carry you. Once you fall because you took a chance. In investments. But I wasn't that stupid. I went out and got me a job. With the same people that tried to play me. You're going to give me back my money one way or another. And that's just how I felt about it. Walking through the door, it was nothing but karma for that company. For what they've done to me. I took my life savings to make that happen. So you see what this 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 industry will do to you? I had money tucked away. For when I get older. 
And because I believed in my, what God needed me to do with these products, I invested my life savings. And they played with it like it was a game. I worked hard for my life savings. So this is why I tell people, you know, don't go all in. If you're not sure on how you're going to maintain your revenue. If you know it can work for you, just like with me doing the laundry service. I know it's a need in in Charlotte. Because not only did it come to me once, it came to me twice. Anytime something comes to me twice, I listen. Because that means that's that's God talking to me. It's a need. Because these people are running so much and staying up so many hours and not getting the proper rest because they have so much to do. So I knew it was a need. Anytime God brings something to me twice, it's a need. So I decided to make it a business to help continue to grow my nonprofit that I've been growing for the last 10 years. Sometimes, you know, when we are all caught up in what social media wants us to believe and what life has to actually offer, We miss some of that sometimes, you know. And the reason why I'm talking about all these things is because now that China is on our side, she needs to know the real to what's going on out here. And now that she has brought herself back to natural form, now she can go out there and build a business, get a job, do whatever she wants to do. Because you're not just subjected to the industry life. Now you can do whatever you can do to industry. You can do businesses. You can just get a job. And be able to live life and maybe even meet somebody that's going to love you long term. I'm praying for it for myself. And I'm praying for it for you as well. Sometimes you just want somebody to just hold you genuinely. Not because you're a music artist. Not because you've dealt with all these celebrities. Not because, you know, um, you're making money. Love me for me. If I didn't have nothing, would you still love me? And that's one of the biggest problems that people go through in this industry. In this entertainment industry. And then you got, you know, these these uh, media hogs that want to find everything negative about you. I want to talk about nothing positive, everything negative. Oh, she's a whore. Uh, how was this person a whore if they had two relationships that didn't work out? It doesn't make it a person a whore. Oh, she's a slut. Because she's wearing this. Um, she works in the entertainment industry. It's, re- it's a requirement. Oh, they forget about the requirements. Oh, she's a stripper because she has a big butt. Well, back when I was coming up, I wasn't a stripper. I took birth control pills and that's what it did to me. But it didn't make me a stripper. So, you know, people's minds is all twisted. 
you know, when it comes to this music industry. And it that happened a couple of eras ago. And this is why they keep calling back the real. So the new generation coming into the music industry will be a little bit more serious. We are getting rid of the um, addicts because uh, being in the music industry, a lot of people was on drugs back in the day, you know. Um, look at like Whitney Houston. God bless her soul. She was one of the ones that was caught up. Had a lot of money, but she was caught up. You know, um, and in the industry now, that's a no-no. You know, it's more than just her. It was, it was a lot of them, a lot of them. You know, it was out here using drugs, having sex with anybody, you know, just doing all kind of negative. And it made the entertainment business look really, really bad. Artists wouldn't show up because they'd be high, drunk. Y'all see the TV shows. You had Temptations. You had um, someone that Jamie Foxx played of. Uh, um, Ray Charles. Um, what's the other guy? Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Lorenz Tate played him. Um, all those people was on drugs and doing all kind of stuff. That made their lives bad. Rick James. Look at him. We still listen to his music today. God bless his soul. Him and Tina Marie. Rick James didn't make no big, big millions, millions of dollars in this industry. And the money that he did make, he parted it up and used drugs. The industry wants away from that. The industry wants away from um, people using drugs, people doing devilish stuff, because it made the industry look bad. And I tell people when you, when you sign up for ASCAP, they give you. This little list, right? <laughs> you got to read the list, read the list, and ask. Um, you on drugs? Uh, do you have any mental illnesses? Uh, ask a bunch of stuff. We have a workout requirement, okay? <laughs> I, I, when I looked at it, I was like, okay, I'll see y'all. I'll see y'all. You know, um... Like me, I got to get up and work out, not because I'm fat. They want to make sure I stay active. Because if I'm active, I'm going to make money. And I can continue to look for my revenue. But if I'm laid down, fat, not fit. Now, fit don't mean, let me tell y'all about fit. Fit don't mean skinny. Okay, because there's some people out here that's skinny and they're not fit. Their stamina is like on zero. Fit and active mean that you can run a race. That's what that means, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because that's what this industry is about. You got to run that race when you drop that song. You got to be moving around. You got to be uh, marketing. You know, you got to go outside and talk to the people. And it's a lot of things you got to do. You got to perform. You know, it's a lot of things. So you have to be fit. Like, I was doing a video on the, for, the, for the TikTok or the Instagram, one of them social medias of the night. I was on a track. I'm walking. It got dark. I decided to do the video when it got dark and I came home. 
But I needed to be on the track. Because I got to stay active. And that's just what it is. You know, it's doing things the godly way. You know, and, and it's, it's simple. I, let me tell you something. I have some rough moments as well over here. You know, people don't know because I'm doing so many things and I'm doing them alone because my family is all spread out all over the place. You know, they, they got even my family members, you know, um, I'm not saying that they're afraid, but they don't want to be around it because they feel like, you know, it's negative. When in actuality, it's really not. And I'm paving the way for the women to come in, the, you know, back into the industry or into the industry positively. You know, everybody thinks it's about death and, and, and you know, um, death and selling your soul. And they, they, they kill me with, with, with the, some of the things that they say just because they don't, they're not intelligent enough to know what is going on. And we sit back and we laughing at you people like stupid. Like, why you got to be so stupid? Do your research. And this is some of these media people. You know? So I can imagine, you know, what Black like, China was going through. You know? But welcome to the other side. You know, um, you join. Uh, spiritual teams, you know, and hopefully, you know, you will continue to uh, learn and elevate on this side, you know, and and accept Jesus Christ in your, in your heart as your Savior, your Lord and Savior. Um, I pray that you find a, a decent man to hold you down mentally, physically, spiritually, you know, um, and whatever journeys that you, you have, I pray that you, you get those dreams. You know, and I pray in, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You know, I, I had to send a prayer out for, for my, one of my sisters, you know, um, my industry sisters. Because I remember when she was contacting me to help me, you know. And that's that's one thing about uh, Christians. Even though people are doing things negatively negatively to themselves, they still have good and pure hearts. So we don't like. How, how can we say it? We don't. Well, I'm not talking to that person because that person is you know that person's a stripper or that person is this and that person is that. And we don't do that. Not Christians. We don't do that. We accept all forms. God has prepared us for it. And it can either do one or two things. We can either see the true colors of that person and then get away. Or we can bring that person closer to to God. That's the ultimate goal. That's why God needs people that has testimonies. And you see where God put her. Now she can talk about. And help others. That's the stepping ladder right there. To leveling up with God. To be able to testify. And be able to say. This is what I've done. You know. I know it wasn't right. You know. um, I accepted my faults. What I've done to myself. What I've done to others. And this was the outcome. And this is where I am now. That's what God asks of us. He doesn't want perfect people. He wants people that's going to make mistakes. So that way you'll be able to fix the mistake and be able to teach others. And this is what we do. This is what I do every day in my life. The mistakes that I make or I see other people making mistakes and it, and it caused the domino effect in my life. I talk about it. That is my duty to God. That's my duty. To testify based on whatever experience I've been through. So the next won't go through it. They may go through something, but it won't be that. If they listen. And see, that's the key. We learn from our mistakes. 
and then we teach others. You learn the good and the bad. You know, it's like the Bible. All the prophets in there and all the kings in there. It was good points about them and it was bad points about them. In other words, they wasn't perfect, but God still carried them. And they knew God. They knew who God was. They respected God, but they were still living certain kind of ways in it. Like, well, wait a minute. Hold on. How, you know, I got to get this together. Same how we're doing right now. That's why the, the Bible is an instruction book with its life. We don't take everything from that book literally. I had someone tell me the other day <clears throat> um, that um, they don't read the Bible because man wrote it. We know that man wrote it. Okay. And man could have did some wrong stuff in there. However, this is my theory. Okay. Just me. Even though man wrote the book, because I didn't, uh, I'm, I'm, let me go back for a moment. I didn't level up with God totally from that book. I leveled up with God from nature, um, creation, learning how he created the heavens and the earth. But in order for me to get there, I still had to read that book. Because I needed to understand what they was understanding. You know, so when, you know, she told me this particular person that I met, which this person was in the music industry as well, right here in North Carolina. And she had said to me that um, she don't read the Bible. She stay away from that because of what people said in the Bible and did in the Bible. It's no way possible that it can be totally true. And she's probably right. However, it's a token to lead people to God. Because you will never see what God really is until you level up. But you can hear the stories and the testimonies that they put in the book in order for you to say, you know what? I get it. Because it's a lot of us that even though and this is just my theory. Even though people feel like man wrote the book and they might have took some words out, put some words in. They still led themselves to God. So if we can utilize it for the new generation. But my thing is to not be j- jumping all over the book. Read the stories. Because there's stories. Even though God and Jesus um, had quotes in there that we needed to follow, that we needed to use to, to pray. But read the story and, and understand why he wanted us to pray that particular way or wanted us to do something that particular way. It can still be used as a token of getting to God, getting to the light, getting to your awakening. So that's why we use the Bible. You know, this year told me something else that kind of floored me. You know, I had on red, you know, everybody know I I wear red, you know, um, signify Jesus Christ. Cover myself in the blood of Jesus, you know, and, you know, she, she, she made some good points, but with me leveling up with God, I see it differently. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why she said, you know, normally I don't talk to people with red and I said, why, you know, she said, but I'm talking to you because I feel like you have a pure soul. And I said, I do, you know, and, um, she said, but you're wearing a color red and I said, what's wrong with the color red? So I, I wouldn't leave until she told me how she felt about the color red. Now she said, now you wear red because of the blood of Jesus. But of course we know that once, um, blood 
touches oxygen, it dies. Okay? It's dead. The cells is dying. That's the transformation. Because the blood inside our bodies and our vein is blue. But once oxygen has hit it, okay, um, it turns red. Okay? That's why. But, you know, and this is the crazy thing. You know, and I'm still doing work on it, guys. So don't quote me on everything. But we also know that the same blood can be put back in you. Okay, so does it totally dies um, once it hits oxygen? Because when people go to dialysis, the blood is being cleaned and then it goes it's being put back in them. Okay, I don't know if the blood comes out red or what, how, how it works. Because I've never had dialysis, but I know people that had dialysis. Um, I never asked that question. And hopefully I can run into someone that has dialysis and they can tell me, does the blood come out red? And then it goes back into your body red. And how does it transform transform, um, and back into being uh, blue? Okay, based on the veins, you know, that we see we have blue veins. Okay, so that's scientifically. Okay, so we're still trying to figure that out. However, um... And my theory, and this is just my theory, okay, and it's a lot of other people's theories as well. Um, When Jesus Christ uh, say they say he died, okay, Um, when they nailed him, you know, we know scientifically facts that if you get shot, hurt, pain is just excruciating. You can actually just fall out. Okay? You could actually go into a coma and it's called pain shock. Okay? But he took that pain for us. Okay? Because he knew that God was going to regenerate him anyway. He lost a lot of blood. One, why did he lose a lot of blood? He lost a lot of blood because he was drinking the night before. He was drinking wine. What does alcohol do to our blood? It thins it out. Okay? So now I'm looking at it both sides, okay? Scientifically and based on what man has projected to us. Okay? So he he had wine the night before. Okay? Last supper. That was Thursday night. He had some wine, some bread, his people, with his disciples, you know, his crew, whatever we call them today, you know, um, his team, you know, he had some wine with them. And um, next day went to endure this pain for his people. Okay. He was down all Saturday, according to man, okay, that wrote the book. He was down all day Saturday and woke up Sunday morning healed. Okay. So was he really dead or did he just fall out from all the pain? When it's a pain shot. But he endured the pain for us. Okay. That's the key thing right there. And then he woke up on Sunday, healed, because God healed him fast. And said, okay, wake up, son. Come on. Come on, wake up. It's a new day. You've rested. Being that man did write the book, do we know if he only slept a day enduring that pain? Or was it a week? Or was it six months? That's why you got some people that believe in Mary, which is his mother, and some religions. And some religions believe in Jesus Christ because you got to remember, Mary is the one that prayed over him. She prayed over him and, and, and asked God to help her son because she did not want him to totally die. If he was dead. I mean, back in those times, how would you know 
if a person is dead if they're non-responsive. They didn't have ways to uh, uh, put machinery on them to check their vitals. They just knew that he was non-responsive. So they took it as he was dead. And laid him in the tombs. The tombs wasn't a casket. They didn't put him in a casket. They just laid him to rest. According to the Bible. But they teaching these people that he was physically dead. Anytime we rest, as Nas said in one of his songs, that's the cousin of death. Because the body slows down. Okay, that's why a lot of people don't like to rest because they think they're they, they dying. But then they don't know if they don't rest, they will die. It, 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 it was the way God designed it. And this is what we go through on a daily basis. We, we can see the facts is what I'm saying. The points that I'm, I'm, I'm making to you guys. Not trying to take out of what y'all believe about the Bible. Because those that believe that will never love, believe everything in there, word for word, will never level up with God. Ever. They'll be stuck right there in that book. And will never really level up with God. You have to think, people, and not take it all literally because man wrote the book. One word can change the meaning of a sentence. So the reality of it was the pain was so excruciating. This is just my theory, and it's a lot of other people's theories. The pain was so excruciating that he passed out. But he was strong enough to endure the pain for his people and still make it through. It was a miracle. And the only reason why it was a miracle is because God's hands was on it. And when he rose, God gave him presidents over the land because... They've never seen anything like it. Like, well, he was living godly. Hmm. They nailed him to the stakes. He bled all over the place and he didn't die. Hmm. Maybe there is a God. You see what it would have done, what it would have done to the people? So God had to, 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 to show them. If you live my way. You're going to just come back. Because your body is going to be able to heal itself. He teaches that all through the Bible. Okay. All through the Bible. He teaches that. Or they teach that. If you live godly and strong, you will survive some of the the hardest pain. It made Jesus stronger. It made people look at him differently. And it brought people closer to God. Because they couldn't believe it. Like, oh my gosh, look, ain't no way possible that this man couldn't have been dead. After what he what, what he went through. But Mary prayed. She prayed and, and asked, asked him to save her son. And he rested. He was the greatest. They had no other choice but to bow to him. Because they knew that there was really a God. 
Ain't no way possible you was. You had big nails in your, your hands and your legs. And you didn't die. The pain that he endured. I would have passed out too. So that's the reality of it. And then God said, well now, they're going to have to come through you in order to get to me. Since they want to put you through pain. Now I'm going to give you all of them. They won't be able to even utter to me. Unless they see you first. Because he endured all that pain. So instead of them thinking they was killing God, they actually made it worse for themselves. They should have believed in the beginning. And you see what God did to them, though. And then we say, okay, God says to pray through his son. You know, let me, let me try this, you know, and see if he answer my prayers. And I, that's just what I've done, you know, because we go, oh, why do you pray like that? Well, that's the way the Bible told me to pray. Let me see if it works. Oh, it works. And nowadays it works even faster. The, 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 the higher level you get with God, your prayers come through even faster. And, it, and it, it's, it's, to me, it's, a, it's amazing. But I know more of God now than what I've read in this book. So I know how to get to him faster. And the more that you do right by him and continue to teach and continue to testify, he rewards you faster. You know, that's that's the way it works. And you you can also tell when the devil hands is in it. Just like with social media, you know. And some other cruel people out here in the world. And then they wonder why bad things happen to them. Because if God sets something forth um and it doesn't follow through. It will come back to you. That's what karma is about. That's no ands, ifs, or buts. Because you interfered in his work. In his plan. Even though the devil was given presence over the earth, but Jesus was as well. And you have a choice. You have a choice to either do it with Jesus or you could do it with Satan. But getting back to what read, when Jesus was uh, tortured on them stakes, okay, I noticed y'all notice I don't wear a cross. I used to. I don't. I don't wear a cross anymore because I don't like the fact that they tortured him on that those, those stakes and it looked like a cross, and they made him carry it too. You know that was just, just so disrespectful. You know, so to me, I, I can't honor that. They made him carry the pain on his back. I mean, carry the the, 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 the stakes on his back. And then nailed them to it. Like, how disrespectful. So I can't honor it. Um. However... He bled out. He rested. And he woke up to a new beginning. So the shedding of that blood woke him up to a new beginning. 
And when he woke up to a new beginning, he had presence over every human life on earth. So we wear red not only for him to cover us with that blood, but to give us a new beginning, the cycle of a new beginning. Even when a woman has her menstrual, okay, we all know that the menstrual is red. It begins the cycle of a new beginning in the body. Okay, we have plants that come in red. Okay, they start growing, they're red, and then they turn green. The new beginning. Okay, it's the process and the way God designed it. Okay, and I learned a lot about God throughout the earth because man didn't do this. Okay, we know that man didn't do this. Some of the stuff outside is, is, is so amazing. You you be like, well, how did he do this? And you be trying to figure it out. And you be like, hmm, okay. All right. I, I, I see you, God. I see you. I see how you did it. Give you something to think about. Oh, I can't figure this one out. It's so amazing how you can look at a plant. That can be red today. And a week from now, it can be green. That's the transformation from the new beginning. Stop the cycle. Whatever cycle was going on, it stops here. And turns into the new beginning. My kitchen is red. Because every time we go eat, because eating, we we have to eat in order to survive. We start a new beginning process every time we eat for our bodies to get the nourishment that it needs to live another day. So I made my kitchen red. Because every time I go in there, I start the new cycle all over again. I start the cycle of me cooking the food fresh, eating it, it going through my body, taking out the nutrients that it needs, and discarding its waste. So y'all see how I broke it down just now? There's no way possible I could stop wearing red. She told me to stop wearing red. So you're telling me that I want to stop a new beginning. Continue to run toxically. No. You got to make it make sense, people. So at that point, you know, I I just started walking away from her. I wouldn't disrespect her, of course, because I never disrespect anybody. But I walked away because I see that she wasn't leveled up enough to understand the cycle of God and how God does his cycles. It's like people were saying, I I forgot where I was, and they were saying, well, how is it living in New York? I said, well, in New York, we have four seasons. We're here in Charlotte. We only have two. However, Charlotte has four seasons as well. You can see the transformation through the plants, through the birds, how they act and when they come back. And you can see the transformation. It's still a transformation. It's just not the way it would be up north. And that's what people are not seeing, the reality of how God himself created it. They're constantly listening to man. So that's that's one of the biggest problems that we go through right now. Choosing who are we going to listen to? Are we going to listen to God or are we going to listen to uh, Satan? You know? 
we have to learn to choose wisely. And sometimes we get caught up in Satan's work because he will, he will, he will make people think that his work is godly. But it will always prevail. It will always prevail. For those that don't know, New York State represents the apple. The big apple. And it's red. New York State is where a lot of companies go to. New York State is where a lot of um, music artists come out of. Where we call a lot of the music artists, artists prophets because they have stories to tell. Kind of like, like you know, like Karis one. He's one. He's big. Nas is big. You know, being um, one people that 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 teach, and that's what music artists are. We're teachers, okay. But you got to choose who you're teaching for. You teach for the devil. You teach for God. And you know, until people understand that. They won't know which road to go down. And I tell them, like, with well, my kids coming up now, you know, I teach them. Are you coming over here with me? I know it takes time. I'm having patience. But are you coming over here with me? You're going to work like God said we need to. You're going to save your money and become a king. Invest or whatever you got to do. So you can become a king, become a prophet. Now, everybody's not chosen because they're still battling. But then you have your chosen ones. And right now, China's a chosen one. Somebody had to do it. So she can testify, so she can tell the stories of what she went through mentally, physically to help the new generation coming up. I believe K. Michelle did it as well, but I don't know her and I haven't spoken to her, so I can't really speak about um, her too much because I really don't know her, you know, and I really don't follow her like that, so... um, but China, I did follow, you know, um, and did speak to her. So, with that being said, um, that's why I'm speaking on it. Whatever her goal is, she would get there. Because now she will be able to help others. And that's what God wants us to do. Spread the word and help others. That is the key to life. To continue to testify... And let people know what to get away from. God don't like perfect people. That's how you gonna teach his people. And you see what happened to Jesus Christ. He was perfect. And they still did what? Nailed him to the stakes. Even though it won him presence over all mankind, he had to endure that pain. I don't want to endure pain. I had enough. Just with life, living life. Because you got the devil always trying to step in.
it takes time, patience, and discipline. And throughout the process of coming closer to God, you're going to have those moments where you feel like you need um, bad in your life, you know. But you just ask God to take it away from you. To give you back the peace. You know, then you have the devil that's going to continue to try to step in and, and, and make you uncomfortable. And all you got to do is pray. And once you pray to God, that feeling will go away. Um, Christians do the same thing every other other people, you know, other people do. Meaning, listen to music, we, we still, we eat. <laughs> um... We, you know, we just don't take hard drugs. We don't uh, do anything to alter our minds away from from God. You know, um, we pray two, three, four, five times a day. You know, we fast. You know, we we, we do a lot. And you know, people think being a Christian is a boring life. It's actually, not if you with a, a bunch of Christians. Christians drank. Jesus drank the night before he was nailed on the stakes. He drank wine. It's the way you act while you're drunk. This is why we don't drink to get drunk. And if we do get drunk, we want to be at home. That way we don't have to be on the outside doing negative things. That's not godly. We have husbands and wives. So if we do get drunk a little bit and lust starts to set in, at least it's with your wife, the one that you chose in God's eyes. You know? So it's, 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 it's a lot to it. But right now, we're dealing with these men. Their minds are so messed up and they don't realize that they need to choose a wife in order for them to live the way they're supposed to. Godly. They think being single is, is the way. I mean, it's not. Almost every man in that book had a wife. They speak about speak about the wife. And it's a couple of them had a couple of wives. They speak about it. So I say all that to say, you know, and I'm still leveling up with God, y'all. I'm I'm not, I'm not done yet because when He's done with me, that's when it'll be over. I'm still making mistakes, you know, um, I'm still continuing to to learn and teach those that's coming up behind me, still fighting the battles of life, you know, and still be able to give my testimonies, you know. I hope everyone have a wonderful day. Um, trying to once again welcome to the other side. Um, I love each and every one of y'all out there. You all have a blessed, blessed, wonderful day. This is Jacqueline Richardson, Miss JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. I'll talk to y'all soon.